Hey folks, today I'm going to show you five of my favorite blues licks that is very easy to learn and you can use it right away to elevate your improvisations over the 12 bar blues or any other progressions when it's appropriate to be used. But at the end, I have a bonus licks that you don't want to miss out. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, let's start with the first lick. The first lick sounds like this. You can start this lick from any downbeat. And to learn this, I like to divide these licks into four different parts. So the first part that I have is C, G, B flat, C. And then the next part is just going down by a blue scale. And then on the third part, I have almost sounds like the first part, but it's just starting from a different note. And the fourth part is just going E flat and C. So again, first part, second part, third part, part four. It's pretty easy, right? So when you put them together, it's gonna sound like this. So how do you practice this efficiently? Well, I like to isolate things. I'm gonna play a backing track of a 12 bar blues and I'm just gonna play this lick over the 12 bar blues. So let's try it together, shall we? All right, let's start with lick number two. Lick number two sounds like this. It's pretty easy, right? So it's a smaller lick. The good thing about a smaller lick, it's become a small phrase that you can use in a lot of different situations. It's not bound to a certain particular ending or phrasing, but you can play it a little bit freely. Before we go there, I'm just gonna show you the two part I'm thinking about this lick. The first part is this. Yeah, it's gonna be in the 60 notes. One, two, three, four, yeah. And then the second part is start from the downbeat, start from F. If I put them together, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, now I'm gonna try to spice things up a little bit, okay? What if I cram more notes into that four pack, become a five notes cram into one beat, become a quintuplet? How does it sound? So it's gonna be like this. And then second part. Okay, so if I play it together, it's gonna be like this. There's a little bit more rhythmical excitement into this right now. Just make sure when you play that, you're playing it on time. That's why it's always good to play with a backing track and see how it sounds together. And as always, I like to isolate things one thing at a time, slow down and having fun with that. So let's try it together. Alright, now for the third licks. Oh, by the way, I have a bonus lick at the very end, so stay tuned until the end, okay? So for the third lick, it's almost sound like the second lick, and it's gonna sound like this. But you probably noticed that I'm starting playing two notes at one given time. And this note that I'm playing over and over again is G. So the G is become the anchor, now I'm using an anchor note just to spice things up. And I'm looking at this as two different parts. The first part is like this. The first note, D, I'm holding it a little bit longer. And then the second part, I play the G again as an anchor. 
and D C. That's it. So first part, second part, and when I put it together, it's gonna sound like this. Now, a good thing about this, you can actually try to transpose it to F, so it's gonna sound like this. The first note here, the thumb is on C, right? When I play it in F, I can transpose it here. So now the set of notes has become this. And you can play it when you're playing F dominant on your left hand in the 12 bar blues. How about on the G? Yes, you can also transpose this to G. So you can move from F whole step up. So you got this. So you can have this. And it sounds fabulous. All right, let's try it with a backing track. Here we go. Now for the fourth lick, I'm gonna borrow the concept from the third lick, which is anchoring and using it in for the fourth lick, okay? So the for the fourth lick is gonna sound like this. Do you know which note that I'm anchoring to? The C right here, yeah, on the very top. So basically you can see this as just right? But that's the anchor note. Now, how about the, the lower note, the note that actually make movement? Now, if I'm eliminating the anchor, so I'm gonna play only the lower notes, it's gonna be like this. Now, the fingering here is very crucial. Otherwise, you're gonna tangle yourself up and you wouldn't be able to ex execute this lick. So, the, the, the fingering that I'm gonna use is two, one, one, two, two, one, two, two, one. So if I put them together, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, two, one. I find this the best fingering. Now, just like the third lick that we learned earlier, that you can actually transpose that into a different key, I can also play this in the key of F if we're in the key of C. We anchor it with C on the bottom, right? On the top, right? But when I'm going to F, I can anchor myself on the F. So when I'm playing in F, it's gonna sound like this. And can I do it in G? Of course, of course. I'm gonna try to, to do it also in G. So in G is gonna sound like this. So how does it sound like when we play together? Alright, now we're at the fifth lick. Remember, I have one more bonus lick at the end, so you want to stay tuned for that. So for the fifth lick, I'm not only playing a blues scale now, but I'm starting incorporating bebop language into the fifth lick. And it will have some problem, I have to admit, it will have some problem, especially when we are playing the chord G and the chord F. But we can modify it a little bit to fit into this lick anyway. All right, I'm gonna divide the fifth lick into three different parts. The first part is this. Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here, I'm basically approaching E. And the way I do that, using D sharp, go to the target note for as a neighbor note, as a passing tone, sorry, and I'm going to F, and then going back to D sharp, back to E. But the target is E all along, so. And for the second part, it sounds like this. This is actually not my target notes. Actually, I'm kind of delaying 
my resolutions and now I'm actually gonna try to aim for E but I'm gonna go to C right away so again part one part two part three don't worry, you will understand more about this when we go into the bebop language. What is approach, what is target notes, what is uh, neighbor notes or passing tones. We're going to learn all that when we're learning about bebop language. So just be patient for a while. So if I put all of them together, it kind of sounds like this. Now, we before, before we go to the backing track, I want to show you how it can be problematic when we go to a different chord. Now, since we are landing on E, it will have clashes when we play in the key of F. Sorry, in the chord F. Because the E flat cannot really coexist with E because they are creating a flat 9 intervals, which is not a very nice intervals to play with. So the way we get around it is instead of circling E, instead of approaching E, I can just play D sharp, E, F, but I'm approaching E flat. So I'm gonna borrow D right here. So I land on E flat. It suits much better with the F dominant here. So again, I'm gonna play this. That's what I would do. I would use finger number two actually. That's what I would do. And the problem also occur if I want to keep going down. So when I'm playing this, I avert the problem. But if I'm going here, that happens again, right? That happens one more time. So the way I avert it, same thing. Instead of doing this, approaching E, I'm approaching E flat from D. So this is what I would do. First solution. Second solution. Okay, so I'm approaching E flat. Now when you're playing this, you might want to use this fingering. Three, four, five, three, four, two, one, four, three, one, two, five. I know, this is a little bit noodle, yeah? It's a little bit tangled, our finger is a little bit tangled in this instance. But you don't have to worry, take your time, take your time. This is like a next level. Start from the easy one, lick number one, lick number two, three, four, and then you're arriving number five. And when you're ready to play that, your finger will be come into place right away. So now let's try lick number five together with a baking track. Here we go. It's time for the bonus lick. Now, the bonus lick is very, very slick. The bonus lick is very, very slick. I like that one. So this is what the bonus lick sound like. I know, there's a lot of things going on here. I'm pretty sure you already heard that million times, million times in your life. Even if you're not a musician, you must have already heard this one way or another. So, what happened is, I have a, a grace note. You see that? That's the first note that I play. I'm kind of gracing over E flat and stumble upon E. My target note is E, but I'm glazed over from the E flat. I'm kind of slipped to the E, from the E flat. The way I'm taking it apart is, I'm going to alternate every chord on the top with the C. But this is what I'm going to do without the C right here. It's gonna, this is what it's going to sound. It's pretty easy, right? Now, if I put C into play, I just have to alternate it with a little bit of nuance. You can actually do whatever you want, but this is how I like to play it. It's 
Now, this is also one of the licks that you can transpose to F and G in the 12 bar blues. So if I play in F, it's gonna sound like this. And can I do it in G? Sure, sure I can do it in G. This is what I will do if I'm playing in G. Okay, do you wanna listen how it's supposed to be when you play it all together in one 12 bar blues? Let's hear it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, happy practicing.